Here we have a moose chuck roast. I am going to put a dry rub on it. I was always taught never to put salt on a dry rub because it draws out the moisture of the meat. So what I've got here is some black and red peppercorns, garlic powder, marjoram and thyme, dry mustard, allspice, and despite it being a dry rub, I'm going to throw some fresh garlic in there as well. Let it sit for about a day and think about that, then sear it up and slow cook it. But first step here is going to be unwrapping this bad boy and checking it out. Okay, let's see what we got here. Moose chuck roast. Not sure when this moose was actually taken. But look at that. Ooh, very well, very nicely cleaned and packaged by the looks of it. Professionally done, one might even say. Open that up. looking piece of meat that's what she said um, yeah look at that still a little frozen so it's gonna need another day or so at least to uh, thaw out and all right I'm gonna get started on this rub got a dry rub in the Mortar or pestle, mortar and pestle, whatever, here. All ground up, mixed up, ready to go. Put that on the moose roast here. I'm just going to dump it all in, as well as the fresh garlic. Pat that around a bit. So we'll let that sit for about a day. Turn it around every few hours. Here's our moose roast. It's been sitting out on the counter for about four hours now. I pulled it out of the freezer on Monday night and put it in the fridge. It's Wednesday today. Pulled it out of the fridge around noon and put the dry rub on it. And yeah, so it's been about four hours. <laughs> 24 hours now. I did find out that it was harvested last year. So, professionally butchered, I don't know by whom, but it was very well done, very nice. Just getting ready to sear it. I also have some unprofessionally butchered deer meat, venison, that unprofessionally meaning I butchered it myself, also taken last fall. It was October 29th, 2023. Took a dough with my muzzle loader. So this is some of the front quarters stew meat. I'm going to cook this separately with a little bit milder flavoring profile. Still going to do some garlic and garlic and butter and some Italian seasoning. So it's for my mother. Hence the slightly abbreviated palate or flavor profile. Gonna sear the moose roast, not gonna sear the deer. Went a little crazy there, I put some lentils in with the deer. So it's just cubed stew meat, basically front quarters, olive oil, butter, threw some carrots in there for some veg. And of course, as I mentioned already, 
garlic and some pepper and paprika. Again, no salt on it until a little bit later on. So the idea of the starting off at 400 Fahrenheit and searing the meat is to get a good seal on the outside of it to try to lock the juices in and then turn it down to I'll probably go 200 degrees for several hours until it's really nice and tender. Just canola oil, want to get it good and hot. What you're looking for right there. Nice sear. Whoops. I want to start a grease fire. We are ready to go into the oven. It's been about three and a half hours since I put the moose roast and the deer meat in the oven. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put the moose roast in the pot covered and some tin foil over the venison. So there's the moose roast. It's looking really good. And there is the venison. Also looking really good. About five hours in now. The oven's been set at about 220, 225 the whole time. It is time to add some wine and the salt. First things first. Cheers. There's the moose roast. Looking and smelling delicious. A bit of wine. And the salt. Now for the venison. Looking good. Also gonna go back in the oven.
There's the moose roast after about six hours, 225, after it was seared, of course. I'm gonna let it rest for a couple minutes. Gravy and onions. Okay, so here we have our moose roast. It's been seven hours, something like that, six, seven hours, all day basically in the oven. And a little bit of uh, salad, cucumbers and tomatoes I also grew in the garden. And I have my taste tester, Michelle, here to try out the moose roast and tell us how it is. So let's give it a try. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm serious. Passes the fork test. <laughs> okay. okay, let's see how this is. Mmm. It's really good. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah, I also did the deer meat. Haven't tried that yet. That's got to pass the mother test. <laughs> I made it for my mother and uh, <laughs> oh, it's kind of really good. the outside. The um, what do they call that? The bark. Mm -hmm. The bark. Super flavorful and tender still. Mm. Yeah, there's the bark. That was that initial searing process. That's why you do it. <laughs> okay, we're going to enjoy our meal. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> so cute. There is our roast deer venison. It went a little bit longer than the moose because it is the front quarters of the deer. So a lot of sinew and stuff in there that's got to break down just takes a little bit longer. But the secret to most game meat is low and slow. So sear it or start it high for a very short period of time, and then lower the temperature to like 200, 225 degrees Fahrenheit eight hours ish and it'll turn shoe leather into butter so there you go we pigged out on the moose meat last night so never got a chance to try the deer but it is fork tender for sure let's see what the inside of it looks like it is falling apart It's actually very tender and delicious. So the secret, not so secret, low and slow method works. Give it a try. Mm. Mm. So good. 
hopefully I'll get another one or two.